Research shows that people today have trouble prioritizing their hobbies. As many as 6 out of 10 would want to spend more time on outdoor activities. So, how can we find a better balance between work and passion? Can they be the same thing? In this interview I meet Mark Watts, son of the Zen philosopher Alan Watts, who created the legendary Live Fully Now speech. I'm Christopher Triumph, and this is Live Fully Now. If you don't mind me asking, who are you? I'm Mark Watts. I'm head of the Alan Watts Center. My father was a philosopher who influenced a lot of people uh, by introducing them to Eastern ideas. At a uh, young age, I began to follow him around and uh, record him. Uh, and he has a portable tape deck, so I would take the tape deck and follow him to the recording site. and. Uh, that began a career of field recording for me. Who was your father, Alan Watts? Well, my father was uh, uh, an Englishman. He was born during the First World War, 1915. And his mom was a teacher at a, a boarding school. And many of the students there were uh, the children of missionaries on their way to China. They would leave their children there. And then when they came back, they would bring her gifts. And these would end up in the parlor. And Alan wasn't allowed to go in there and play because he might break something, but he would sneak in. And he was fascinated with these landscapes and just the images that he saw. And then soon he found a book called Glimpses of Forgotten Japan, and that was it. After that, he was off. Everything he could read about Eastern religion and philosophy, uh, he just consumed. My goodness, don't you remember? When you went first to school, the idea was to push along, going up and up, up to the great moment in which you're ready to go out into the world. And then, suddenly, you wake up one day and say, Huh? I've arrived. And while it is of tremendous use for us to be able to look ahead and to plan, there is no use planning for a future, which when you get to it and it becomes a present, you won't be there. You'll be living in some other future which hasn't yet arrived. You can't live at all unless you can live fully now. I enjoy that talk very much. I think he was uh, addressing a fundamental intellectual confusion that we have. If you're in a state of distraction, um, the, the moment is lost on you completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever it is now may just be a, a, a something cast, a, cast away. And your father worked somewhere in this area? Yes, just to the south on the slopes of Mount Tamalpais, he had a wonderful little cabin where he would go to get away and write. And uh, next to it, he built a library from a water tank. It's now in a state of uh, returning to nature, uh, but it has a, a really uh, a original beauty to it. it uh, we don't see things usually in that way, uh, but the Japanese have a word, uh, aware, uh, which means delicious loneliness. And so even though it's in the process of uh, being covered by leaves and debris, I think that it has a rich and deep soulful feeling still. It, well, of course, it holds a lot of memories, uh, you know, visiting my father there and uh, lots, of, um, uh, lots of great experiences with him. Uh, it's also uh, the place where uh, my father passed away uh, and his ashes are there. Uh, so it has uh, deep significance in that way. But it's also, because of the way it manifests his work at that time, it's the seeds of what we're doing now. Could you give us an advice on how to live fully now? As my father used to say, you have to go out of your mind to go, come to your senses. And it's important to go crazy at least once a day in the sense of breaking the continuity of thought. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> A pleasure. <laughs>